Hi everyone, my name is Sierra. I'm joined here with my partner, Jasmine. We're students at the University of Hawaii at Hilo, Daniel K. Inouye College of Pharmacy. We'll be talking with you about what's the deal with hypertension. So we're gonna start off by taking a look at this number, 494,873. Now this number is actually the amount of deaths in the US that included hypertension as its primary or contributing cause of death in 2018. Now you don't need to memorize this number, but we're here to keep you aware of the fact that nearly half a million people are losing their life from a condition that is both preventable and manageable. So to look at some other statistics, about 45% of adults in the US have hypertension. This is about 108 million people. And of that group of people, only a quarter of them, so about 25% of the adults are in control of their hypertension by being compliant with their medications or by making appropriate lifestyle changes. This leaves the other 75% or 81 million adults not in control of their hypertension. Now the topics we'll be covering include what is hypertension? What are some of the complications and signs of hypertension? What are the risk factors? what it is that you can do at home to prevent or manage hypertension, and then taking a look at understanding your medications and covering the blood pressure goals we want you to keep in mind. So let's start off with what is hypertension. So when it comes to hypertension, we are looking at blood pressure. Now blood pressure is the measurement of the pressure or force of blood on the arteries. Hypertension means high blood pressure. This could look something like a systolic or top number greater than or equal to 140 or a diastolic or bottom number greater than or equal to 90. Something to keep in mind though is that blood pressure fluctuates throughout the day but it's when your blood pressure levels are consistently higher than normal. That's what can possibly lead to a diagnosis of hypertension. So now to cover the complications of hypertension. Some of the main complications that can occur when an individual's hypertension is worsens or is not controlled include heart attack, stroke, kidney disease, eye disease, damage to the blood vessels, or bone loss. Now it's important to understand the complications because when we're looking at the signs of hypertension, there are none. So unlike many other diseases that have symptoms you can look out for, hypertension does not have that same ability. This is why hypertension is commonly referred to as the silent killer. Not unless you're always checking your blood pressure to see it being high or elevated, most people will go about their daily lives not realizing they have it. So let's take a dive into risk factors. Now risk factors are the factors or conditions that can increase your risk of developing a disease. It's important to remember that just because a risk factor applies to you, that does not necessarily mean you will have hypertension. This just means that the risk of getting hypertension is higher, and that's why understanding how to control your blood pressure is important. So there are two types of risk factors, non-modifiable and modifiable risk factors. Now the non-modifiable risk factors are those that cannot be changed, such as family history, age, gender, and race. On the other hand, modifiable risk factors are the risks that can be changed if various measures or actions are taken. These are things like lack of physical activity, overweight or obese, 
eating an unhealthy or high sodium diet, drinking too much alcohol, and even stress. So now let's take a look at some of the things that you can do at home to help prevent or manage hypertension. So in terms of lifestyle, we have the DASH diet. The DASH diet stands for the Dietary Approach to Stop Hypertension. And the goal of this diet is to create a heart healthy eating style that is both flexible and well balanced. Studies have shown that the DASH diet is able to effectively lower your, a patient's blood pressure in as little as two weeks. It can also furthermore help reduce the risk of heart disease and stroke. Some other main components of the DASH diet include lowering your salt intake because an increase in salt has been linked to increased blood pressure levels. Now, one of the ways you can address this is by looking for low to no sodium options and then also choosing fresh foods instead of processed foods. If you look to the picture on the right, you'll see that the DASH diet is rich in fruits and vegetables. It also includes low fat or non-fat dairy products. And then other things like whole grains, lean meats, nuts, beans, and seeds. The DASH diet is also high in fiber and only includes low to moderate amounts of fat with an emphasis on reduced saturated fats, such as fast food and alcohol restrictions. Some other tips Jasmine and I have gathered include rinsing your canned items. So things like canned vegetables, Rinsing them can help remove the added sodium from the package. You could also cook skinless chicken by baking it on a rack or air frying, and then avoid adding extra salt to your meals when you're cooking. Another good tip is by meal prepping for the week. This can help you avoid getting fast food or buying takeout. Now, in addition to the DASH diet, we also want to say no to alcohol and smoking. So when it comes to alcohol, it's recommended that males limit their drinks to less than two per day and females limit their drink to less than one per day. Now, a drink is defined as a 12 fluid ounce of regular beer, which is equivalent or equal to eight to nine fluid ounces of malt liquor five fluid ounces of table wine, or a one and a half fluid ounce shot of an 80 proof spirit or hard liquor. And these numbers are based on the amount percentage of alcohol within the drink. And on the other hand, with smoking, smoking is a major risk factor for cardiovascular or heart disease. So it's recommended to quit smoking or undergo smoking cessation. Now with exercise, there's aerobic activity and 40 minute sessions four times a week of moderate to vigorous physical activity is an appropriate recommendation. If trying to promote weight loss, then 60 minute sessions are also recommended. With exercise, sometimes you just need to take the first step and start because even a weight loss of at least 10 pounds can also significantly decrease your blood pressure levels, especially in overweight patients. Now, some of the types of activities that you can do that are moderate intensity include water aerobics, cycling less than 10 miles an hour, ballroom dancing, or general gardening. On the other hand, some vigorous intensity examples include race walking, jogging or running, swimming laps, hiking, or doing more heavy gardening. Now, Jasmine will talk to you about understanding your medications.
All right, as Sierra said, next we're gonna talk about understanding your medications. Common blood pressure meds your doctor may prescribe you include ACE inhibitors such as lisinopril, the class of angiotensin receptor blockers or ARBs, common one is losartan, diuretics such as ferrosamide, and beta blockers like metoprolol. How these blood pressure meds work vary from class to class. However, they work to lower the amount of pressure or force on arteries. ACEs and ARBs help to relax and widen the blood vessels. Thiazide and loop diuretics help to eliminate excess sodium and water from your body. And beta blockers make it easier for your heart to pump and widen your blood vessels. When taking your medications, it's important to take them exactly as directed per your doctor or primary care physician's instructions. Also be cautious about potential interactions from other things that you may be taking, such as caffeine or nicotine products, as well as cough and cold drugs. Wanted to mention some symptoms of hypotension or too low blood pressure, or about 90 over 60. This is more common in elderly population and may present as dizziness and tiredness, having nausea or blurred vision, rapid shallow breathing, as well as weakness and cramping. Ways to manage this is to always stand slowly from a seating or laying down position and to drink lots of fluids unless otherwise directed by your doctor. Side effects can differ based on the drug being taken as well as from person to person, so contact your doctor or pharmacist to learn more. As Sierra mentioned earlier, hypertension often does not have any noticeable symptoms. But when experiencing a hypertensive crisis, you may notice um, some severe chest pain, heart palpitations, severe headache, nausea or vomiting, severe anxiety, as well as shortness of breath or bloody nose. Any of those symptoms would require immediate medical attention. Just wanted to bring that to your attention. Now we'll talk about blood pressure goals. For most patients, 140 over 90 is an appropriate target blood pressure. Here is a graph from American Medical Association on how to me measure your blood pressure at home. Let's watch this video to learn more. Here's how to take your blood pressure at home. Before you begin, two hours before, no alcohol or eating. 30 minutes before, no tobacco, caffeine, or exercise. First, sit down and relax in a chair that has a back. Uncross your legs, put your feet flat on the floor, and keep your back straight. Wait five minutes before beginning and try not to talk during this time. Take your log sheet and pen out so that you are ready to record your measurements. Grab your blood pressure monitor, set up the cuff per its instructions, and make sure your arm is out straight and supported on a flat surface. Begin taking your blood pressure and make sure there are no distractions or talking during this time. After the reading is complete, wait one minute, then measure a second. If your blood pressure is high, repeat the reading a third time and record the lowest of the two. Finally, record your measurements in your blood pressure log. Be sure to contact your physician if you have any questions or concerns regarding your blood pressure readings. So for more information, you can visit the American Heart Association, the Center for Disease Control, or the World Health Organization. They're all great resources where you can find a lot of important and relevant health topic information. Remember, for a healthy heart and soul, hypertension should be controlled. Thank you so much for listening today. And here are our resources that we use for this presentation.